Hi, I'm Ian Easton, and this is me talking about my album, Short Stories. Yeah, I think we started in April, and the whole album at that point was totally different. I think I got rid of three or four songs within the first month. So we recorded, um, Dan and I recorded probably about 13 maybe, songs, maybe. I think we ditched a couple of those um, simply because they, in my opinion, weren't good enough. The songs are always the same for me. It's always, it's always either about difficult times, love, or heartache, which I suppose can probably go in the same bracket. I can't really write about anything else, I don't think. Um, I've tried before, I've tried the heavy riffs thing and that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I tend to now just stick to what I think I do best. <laughs> So um, this studio, I recorded my last record in this studio as well, and it is phenomenal for natural reverb. Um, the wooden floor is great, and it's just such a big, wide open space uh, that it just sounds mega. Um, with the right person, Dan, doing the pressing the buttons and recording and setting everything up and being the producer for the whole thing, um, it's something you can't really say no to, I suppose. Uh, it's just phenomenal in here. Should we test the reverb now? Ah! Listen to that. No digital reverb needed whatsoever. It's just phenomenal. Yeah, what do you want to know? The, uh, the album started actually back in back in April. I said to him, you know, come to the studio, you can we can do some guide tracks just so you can hear what your album's gonna sound like. Because he had another studio booked up, and then we like the take so much and we like the sound of it so much that he just said, come on, let's just do the rest of the album here. Which is great, you know, because it allowed me to be more of a producer on the record um, and kind of work my magic in that way and just kind of bring his songs more, more to life. I like that as well. Oh man, I don't know, what do you prefer? It had to go. Do, do, do. Working with Dan is, um, It's effortless, really. He, do, he doesn't really, um, he doesn't really, he never gets stressed. He's never got stressed with me once. We've done three albums together now. And I'm less picky on this album because I wanted it to be a very organic process and there's a lot more live takes and things like that. But in the last that two albums for the Widowmaker stuff, there was a lot of overdubs um, and I was very keen on getting it absolutely perfect which I think was right for those albums, but I wouldn't do that now. Um, I'm a different person and I've got different tastes, I suppose. I mean, he's a great musician to work with because he's, he's technically brilliant. He's really easy to produce. He's really, you can say to him, don't do that ever again. Or you can say, you know, do that exactly the same again. And you know, he can, he can just do it like that. It's great, it makes my job a hell of a lot easier working with artists like that. Even though I was being very specific and picky, he was never, you know, impatient or like, come on, leave it at that type thing. It was just, you know, that's fine. If that's what you want, that's fine. Uh, very easy to work with. And he also brings the best in, out in me as well because we're mates and we play together as well. And he knows my style, he knows how I work. And so when he's setting things up and when he's pressing record and talking to me in the headphones, in the booth and all that kind of stuff, um, he just knows what makes me tick, I suppose, and how to push my buttons. So, I'll do accounting. Um, I can't remember if I did it to a click or not. No. <laughs> Brilliant. Did I really not? Mm. Yeah, just this. Yeah, that. Now, no, no. 
Oh, there is a click for that last bit. Cool, we can do like a four. Yeah. What we tend to do is do a few takes and build up to a peak, I suppose, and then do like three and then choose the best one. Um, and he knows how to get that out of me, I think. Um, plus he's fucking knowledgeable in terms of mics and all the gear to use as well. So, And I don't know what I'm talking about. So, you know, genuinely without him, it wouldn't sound like it does. So, so the album was written in its entirety probably 18 months ago. Um, uh, something happened to me that was very personal during that time and I started writing a lot of stuff uh, in the aftermath of that. And I realised I'd been in a comfort zone for the last you know, year, creatively I think. Uh, nothing was really getting my juices flowing like it used to. Um, I think maybe it takes something big and horrible to happen to you like that for you to be able to, you know, dig deep down and find the best stuff that you can find. And All was just a demo uh, that we did probably two years ago, maybe even more and we were just messing around. And I went, oh, I've got this new song, listen to this. And I, I went through it once, just sat there, and he went, oh, let me mic that up. And so he mic just one microphone, and I did it in one take. And we've used that version. I don't think I can do better than that version. We tried in here, and I couldn't quite hit the mark. So we've, we've kept that version. So that version, yeah, it's just one microphone in the control room, um, yeah. All right. It made it onto an album five years later. Right? <laughs> it was. It was about four years ago. Yeah, yeah that was. Yeah. But then we're all going to like clap and cheer and go, woo! Right, there he is, mate. Cut away for those. Those two chumps. <laughs> and I won't let you go, although you need better. Having some guests on the record. So the producer Dan is going to be uh, playing on the record. He's already done some stuff already, doing percussion. He's done some Ebo work, some guitar work, hopefully some backing vocals because he's got a good voice. What was that? <laughs> why, why did you come in? Wait. <laughs> why did you come in? <laughs> I couldn't have that. <laughs> As well, we're going to have Richie Towton um, and Daniel Morris of Echo Tape fame, Richie of Madison's fame and Curbed fame. Um, they're going to be doing some backing vocals and bass and all that kind of stuff as well. So it's nice, it's so nice and humbling and a privilege to have people like that, uh, those three, on the album. Yeah, it's brilliant. Although, actually, the other is day. Is this recording? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the other day. Is that is that a moving image? <laughs> I found some blue cheese in my fridge that so I was like, sick, I forgot about this. So didn't see that it, most of it had turned to water. Opened oh, it up. Mate. My house still smells of blue cheese. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was so bad. Running is probably the song that I'm most proud of. There's actually a part in the song um, where I start to choke as well when I'm doing the recording because we did it, I think, live in a wanna. I think maybe we had to re-record over that bit that specific line, because I think I actually went because it was I was really giving it some. Um, I think it should be, it should come in here. So it should be quite a short intro. The album artwork is done by a lady called Katie Johnson. Um, she's done my last two albums as well. Um, phenomenal, very specific style. Um, and it's done this time in this style of Art Nouveau. She's phenomenal. Uh, lovely girl, uh, totally humble and gets what I want straight away. 